what's up? My name is Olivia and I'm a recent graduate from the University of California, Davis and in the fall I'm going to be starting graduate school at Penn State. In this video I'm going to teach you how to find the right IO Psych program for you. You're going to learn where to even start looking for programs, the difference between getting a master's versus a PhD in the subject, and then what aspects and factors of each program you should look to that are going to help you best reach your end goal, whether that is industry or academia. Your very first stop when searching for an IO graduate program is to go to the PSYOP website, which I'm going to put a link to it down below. Now on this website they have a database where you can look for graduate programs. On this page you have a variety of options. What I like to do when I'm just first searching is go to classroom only. Now you'll have a list of all the graduate schools that offer this program. Now I just like looking through the database to find the school names. I don't necessarily trust what's in the drop down box because you never really know when it was last updated. So I'll click on it and then immediately go to the school's website and get my information from there. Now something you may have noticed is on this site it'll tell you if the program is in the psychology department or in the business department. Department. That is because there is a closely related field to IO psychology called organizational behavior. There's this really great journal article from a professor at University of Tulsa that tells you the difference between organizational behavior and IO psych PhD programs. So I'm going to put that link to the article below. Okay, now that you've clicked on a program, the first thing you want to look at is the curriculum. A lot of times schools will have their four or five year sample plans that will tell you what classes you're actually taking. This is really important because you need to see if you're actually going to get to take the classes you want it takes. It's also where you'll get to see if it is more of an economics based program or if it does have HR or sociology. Some IO programs have something that's called an OHP concentration which is occupational health psychology concentration. So this is going to be your employee well-being, your work family life. Now the OHP website does have a list of schools that have that specific concentration, but it's not a comprehensive list. I will say that Portland State University has that concentration, Central Michigan University has that concentration, and I believe Clemson and Ohio University have that concentration as well. Another really big thing to look at is does this school encourage internships, require internships, or tell you straight up that this program is preparing you for academia only, not industry. A lot of times it will say it on its main page. For example, Cornell, you go on it and it says straight up, we're training you to go into academia to be a tenure track professor. Whereas other schools are gonna say, we prepare you to do both, you get to decide. Some schools like Virginia Tech even require that you do an internship. Other schools just highlight, hey, if you wanna go industry, we have students who have gotten internships at all these different places, but we also have students who have gotten jobs at all of these universities. And then other programs aren't really gonna scream, hey, we allow you to do internships and stuff, but when you look and dig a little bit deeper, they do have that. If that information is not on the home page of the IO Psych program website, then it's going to be under something called program outcomes or similar names to that. Another really big thing you want to look for is the phrase science practitioner model. The science practitioner model means that they're going to teach you the research methods and the research behind certain things, but then also how to apply it in a real world setting. Unless you want all theory and no application, no reality for how this plays out in the world, then you're going to want to make sure it has science practitioner model. Next, you want to look at the faculty at that school. You want to see what research interests they have and then what experience they have if your goal is to go industry. When you find a professor that you think you might be interested in working with, it is a really good idea to send them an email and ask them if they are taking students for the upcoming year. Another thing you might want to ask about is whether they're retiring anytime soon. Because I know someone who started at a program and literally the next year, like once she was there for a year, the professor that she chose that school to work with him retired. So now she had to find another advisor and it wasn't quite her research interest. Also check out and see if the program encourages that students work with multiple faculty members. I know at Penn State in their IO program, they actually require you to work with several different faculty members during your time there. But I know that other schools are very particular about you get assigned to one professor and you work with that professor. Next you want to look at the graduate assistantships. You want to see if they contain a tuition waiver, what kind of assistantships they offer as far as being a TA a teaching assistant or an RA research assistant. Sometimes they'll also have you be an administrative assistant. I'm gonna link below a Google Doc that a professor at University of Tulsa actually sent me and it has a whole list of things to think about when choosing a program and a big thing it talks about is the assistantships, the waivers, things like that. If you're looking at a PhD program and they do not offer waivers and instead charge an insane amount of tuition, 
That's a red flag. Depending on the field, it's common that master's degrees you might have to pay for, but a PhD should be free to you. Like they should be covering your tuition and they should be giving you a stipend and you are working in return for that, but just keep that in mind. Make sure that's a thing at the school you're looking at. Now I wanna talk a little bit about getting your master's degree versus a PhD and what schools typically have in regards to these programs. So from my experience, there are a lot of schools that don't allow you to just apply to a master's degree and get a terminal master's. You have to apply to the PhD program and the first two years are gonna be your master's and then you're gonna do your PhD but the master's is a master's of arts. It's all about setting you up to do research versus a master's in science, which is what you're gonna wanna get if you wanna do the industry. University of Nebraska Omaha has these two separate routes and it's really interesting when you look at the curriculum because the MA degree is a lot of basic psych class, a lot of basic research methods, then maybe one or two IO classes, but the MS degree, every single class is actually in regards to this profession and is gonna set you up for success. Some schools don't have an MS degree, they have an MA degree, and then they say after this you can go into industry or you can continue on to a PhD. So again, I would just encourage you to look at the curriculum and see does that school encourage internships, do they offer internships, do they require internships? Because you wanna make sure if you're going to a program, especially if you're paying for your master's degree, paying a lot of money, you wanna make sure the program is actually gonna set you up for the career that you want. Lastly, I highly, highly, highly encourage that you actually physically go visit these schools. It was really helpful getting a student's perspective on what they feel like the program does really well and what they feel like is really lacking in the program. If you're looking to get a master's degree, I would also say look and see where students are coming from who are going to that school because I visited a school and they straight up told me that because my geographical location was far away from where the school was located, and if I got a high GRE score, then they would not be likely to accept me. That is a really, 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 really big red flag. If a school is not looking to attract the brightest and best talent it possibly can, why would you go there for school? When you're looking at where these students and applicants came from, usually in that same section, it will say what they typically do. There are some programs where everyone from the IO department literally went and worked for like schools and the city. Because if everyone from that program is just staying local, which there's nothing wrong with that, not interested if you weren't interested in corporate or anything like that, it's just a really good thing to look at to see where are these people going. On a similar note, if you're looking at PhD programs, you wanna see how long it's taken for students to actually get through with a professor, if that makes sense. So does this professor have a high rate of, yep, their students graduate in five years and they get a job immediately? Or do they have several students who are on their seventh year, their eighth year, can't get jobs? That's something important to look at as well because ultimately at the end of your schooling, you need a job. From what I've said here, this should be a really good start to your search for the perfect IO psychology graduate program. I'm gonna link all of the resources that I mentioned down in the description box below. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna follow along my graduate school journey and then also share this video with your friends, with your fellow classmates who are going through this process as well. I will say that I ended up going to a media effects communication graduate program. Anyways, I hope you have a a wonderful day. Keep dreaming out loud and I will see you guys next time. Bye.